All right, so yeah, not a whole lot of answers this episode, just more questions. But I must admit that I honestly don't mind this at all, especially since the last episode provided us with a lot of answers. I mean, yeah, they were mostly about Boyd, but hey, I mean, you guys know how things go with this show by now, and we just gotta take what we can get, you know? That, that's just the way it is. But let's go ahead and jump into the recap for episode eight, into the woods. So the episode opens exactly where episode seven left off with showing us Boyd and Sarah as they head off into the woods. Sarah wants to know how Boyd knows which direction to go in and Boyd tells her that he's going in that direction based off the location of where he found the talismans. And this is where they spend the rest of the night because it was two hours before dark and Boyd didn't really wanna, you know, take the risk of wandering around in an unfamiliar area so close to nighttime. Plus Boyd already said that he hasn't been past the point of where he found the talismans. So it really wasn't a good idea to just be wandering around in an unfamiliar area, not knowing about, you know, other stops that he could make. Plus we already know that, you know, before he opened the tent and used the talisman with the tent, I think he wanted to sort of give that some time first and not just sort of dive directly into that, not being 100% certain if that would work. Then back in town at the diner, we see Kenny talking to his mom about how the radio tower is being built. He tells her that everyone was divided into three groups, where one large group builds the tower and then the other two smaller groups will work on the radio and the power source. And he basically cracks a joke and mentions how Jade is pretty much the last group by himself. I mean, yes, we know Jim is helping Jade out with creating the power source and all of that stuff, but we know who the mind is, who's going to pretty much be the one to really figure this out. We pretty much know that that's going to be Jade. They also mention Victor and how Jade still hasn't found him yet, but after Kenny leaves the diner to go ring the bell, he gets in a little cupcake with Christy on his way out. So apparently, you know, all is still well with them. So yeah, good for you, Kenny. I mean, I'm sure Kenny wanted a lot more, but at least he can say he got a kiss before the season ended. Then over at the police station, we see Donna getting Colony House residents settled in for the night. And we see the random guy known as Dale still finding things to bitch about. Meanwhile, we jump to the Matthews where we see Tabitha heading back upstairs from digging the hole in the basement. As she walks up the staircase, she sees Ethan's finger puppets along with some of his other toys. As she continues to walk, her surroundings begin to change into what seems to be a watchtower from the Middle Ages. Then she sees a bottle like the ones Boyd and Sarah come across towards the end of this episode. Then she hears a phone ringing, a baby crying, and once she reaches the top of the staircase, she sees Jim hanging upside down from the ceiling. In this moment, Jim yells, which is actually the sound from the horn when they crashed on the highway, and then she wakes up. Now, in this scene, we definitely know that the baby crying is Thomas, and the phone ringing is how Jim and Tabitha got distracted the day, you know, Thomas died. And I think the bottles represent the bottles that Boyd and Sarah come across later in this episode. That's my guess. Now, I'm not sure about the card and the dump truck. I don't know if they have any strong significance or if those are just, you know, some more of Ethan's toys that were out of focus when they focused on the finger puppets but the finger puppets seem to be the focus of this scene. Now, episode one is where Julie used the finger puppets to tell Ethan the story about the Lake of Tears, and I'm thinking that's gonna have some very strong importance or significance towards the finale, or in the finale. There's only one correlation I can think of from this scene with Tabitha, and that's the fact that we have another historical correlation. First, it was the Civil War soldiers. Now we see her in a watchtower that looks like it's from the Middle Ages. So what are you guys' theories on this? Also, let me know if you guys can point out any other historical moments so far from the show that could possibly correlate with this event. And also, I believe the scene of Jim hanging upside down at the top of the tower could be symbolic of him possibly being in danger later once he tries to build the radio tower. When he and Jade tried to get a signal on the radio at the tree, Jade was chased away by the Union soldier. Now, I think a similar occurrence will happen to Jim and Tabitha will have to save him, possibly. It was almost like she had one of those visions like they have in the final destination movies you know right before someone dies and they can see something happening so i really started to get that sort of vibe here but i could be wrong about that but that's the vibe that i got also there was an image of her standing in the street in the town but i think that that was just part of her dream sequence and it didn't really have any major significance i mean it was obvious that she was having a nightmare and i think that that was just you know her being reminded of her being stuck in the town but it could have also been a hint at her being there at a earlier point in time or in another time i mean 
that's not really too far fetched because we've already seen that the bracelet that she gave Jim was there. So it could have been a hint at that as well. But I think that there was no real major significance. Honestly, I thought it was just part of her nightmare. And the major focus was actually her, you know, walking up the staircase and seeing Jim hanging upside down. I think that that was like some sort of premonition. But what do you guys think? The next morning, we jump back to the police station where we see that one of the Colony House residents committed suicide. His name was Eric. But come on, let's be honest. Nobody really gave a shit about Eric. Nobody really knew who he was. I mean, this is another one of those obscure characters like Kevin. And I think they're just sort of trying to fill in the blanks of the town because you can't have all of these people running around and not have any sort of relationships with our main characters with these people. So I think this is just another one of those situations, which it does make sense if I'm being honest. I mean, people are starting to lose hope because of all of the other unfortunate occurrences. And also we don't have Father Katri around anymore to provide faith and hope, which I'm sure is making things quite difficult for those who relied on his service. Then over at Colony House, we see Jim and Kenny discussing the materials needed for the radio tower. Donna walks up during this time and Kenny ends up asking her about Eric so he can access the supplies. But Donna tells him that Eric isn't coming because of course Eric isn't coming. During this time inside, Ellis and Fatima also discuss what happened to Eric. And Fatima reveals during this time how she's afraid of the radio working. Because if it does, she'll be afraid of transitioning back into society after everything that has happened in the town. Back in the woods, Sarah begins to question Boyd about his plan to find a way out, and basically how it could just be a waste of time. But Boyd is stern about how he feels regarding his plan. Then he throws the doubts right back at her ass and asked her how does she know the voices just weren't lying to her, which was honestly a pretty good question, and he also asked why did she want to kill Ethan, and she reveals to Boyd that she did it to protect her brother. After her intentions are revealed, Boyd removes the cuffs, which I don't think was a good idea. I mean, she's still sort of a ticking time bomb, but whatever. Back at the Matthews, Ethan tells Tabitha and Julie how they need to combine Victor's drawings because they tell a story. Then they all begin to play a game called When I Get Home I, where they all go around the table saying what they'll do when they get back home. When it's Ethan's turn, he tells them that he just wants them to be happy, like they are now in the town, once again reinforcing the fact that the town has brought them closer together. But of course, once again, they don't really understand Ethan's logic, and the idea of this place possibly being helpful to them still comes across as nonsense. I'm sure. But we know that this does start to change a little bit for Julie a little bit later in this episode. Meanwhile, over at Colony House, Jim and Jade are struggling with finding a reliable power source for the radio. During this time, Jade insists that Jim should take a look at the symbol in the book, and he talks about needing to find Victor. But Jim dismisses the idea and assumes that Jade just wants to go somewhere and get high, mainly because Jim just doesn't understand how locating Victor could help them. Because mainly, Jim has been thinking inside the box, and he's been thinking more so as an engineer and very logical rather than you know changing his way of thinking based off the way the town works and I think that this is why Jade has been more so helpful in this category because he's been thinking outside of the box. Then we cut to Donna and Kenny as Kenny reveals to her that he knows about Eric which she's been having a hard time mourning the loss of but Kenny tries to console her and he also asked her to help with the supplies. Then she goes into an emotional rage and starts chopping up the colony house floor with an axe. So yeah Donna's really been going through it right now because she's really upset upset with Eric and you know the fact that he chose to go out the way he did. Then back in the woods Sarah tells Boyd how her brother Nathan had a theory that if someone tried to push too hard to leave the town that something would start to push back. Then they begin to hear what seems to be bottle wind chimes hanging from a tree nearby. They approach the tree and Boyd is able to see something inside the bottles. As he tries to pull one of them down Sarah goes into another seizure after hearing the voices or a voice and I'm thinking in this moment that that was a voice that was trying to tell her to tell Boyd to stay away from whatever they were about to discover or whatever they were about to get into. I mean, of course, we find out what the voice was later and what it said, which I'll get to that later. But I was thinking just in that moment, something was trying to stop them from figuring something out. So during this time back in town at the bar, Donna tells Kenny how special Colony House was and how she's not too crazy about leaving this place and how he needs to be prepared for the fallout if the radio doesn't work. And what's so interesting about this scene to me is that we're starting to see Donna appreciate the town as well. She takes the side of basically wanting to stay in the town because just like Ethan, she feels like this place is special as well. 
It seems like more and more we are beginning to see more supporting arguments as to why some of them actually want to stay there. It's almost like the purpose of this place is to be some sort of twisted time out or a break from the real world. And I gotta say, these new perspectives are very interesting, but what do you guys think about all of this? Back at Colony House, Ellis informs Jim about having enough materials for the wires. He's also quite cynical when it comes to Jim finding a reliable power source for the wires, but Jim maintains his confidence and optimism that he can figure it out. Meanwhile, in town at the police station, Christy tells Kenny about how close she was to Eric. And really, the gist of this moment is that she doesn't want Kenny to be in a situation where he might react like Eric if things don't work out with the radio. So mainly, she was just there to offer her love and support for him. You know, just in case everything goes to shit. Over at Kenny's house, we see Jade complaining to Miss Lou about the pressure he feels regarding the radio and the power source situation. Then all of a sudden, while talking to Miss Lou and aggravating the shit out of her, a light bulb goes off for Jade and it seems that he has now figured out the power source issue or that he actually has because he says to himself he knows how to fix it. Back at the Matthews, Jim and Julie have a little father-daughter moment, which we haven't really seen much of this season, so it was actually kind of nice to see that. But in this moment, we also find out that Julie joins the optimistic club regarding the town. And she also begins to realize the positive effect that this place has had on her family. And also, there's some interesting questions on the walls that we will be coming back to later. Then we jump back to the woods with Boyd and Sarah. We see that Sarah wakes up after her seizure and Boyd tells her that he found a piece of paper inside the bottle that says 1864. He claims that that was all it said, but it looked like that piece of paper actually said more. But he said it only said 1864. That was it. Which is another reference that seems to be pointing to the Civil War, since it happened between 1861 and 1865. And he also mentioned that as far as he could tell, every bottle had a piece of paper in it like the one he had. You know, I wish Boyd would have checked a couple of the other bottles just to see if the years matched or if they were different, or just to see if there were even years mentioned in the papers in those bottles. I mean, he just sort of assumed that without looking, and it could have been some useful information, maybe. Then Sarah tells Boyd that she heard a different voice tell her that they should go back. She said that it was a woman's voice that was screaming this time to tell Mr. Mr. Fishing Loaves, I was wrong, and how there are things out in the woods that are worse than the monsters. <laughs> oh shit. And of course, if you all have been following my recap so far, then it's quite obvious that the woman that was communicating with Sarah is Boyd's wife, Abby. Unless this is some sort of situation where any of the voices can pretend or impersonate other people and they can sort of try to come across as a voice that you're familiar with. But I really doubt that that's the case in this situation because this is a voice that's actually telling them to go back and, you know, to get away from where they are. So it sounds like a voice that's actually trying to keep them protected it and not trick them. But what do you guys think? During this time, Boyd and Sarah begin to hear some sort of noise outside the tent. Sounds like something is running around or climbing around in the trees. Then all of a sudden, it starts sort of fucking with their tent and then it starts dragging them. So yeah, that was pretty crazy. Then we cut back to the Matthews in the hole and we see that they seem to have hit the bottom. But before we have a chance to see what it is, we cut back to Boyd and Sarah as the tent finally stops. Then Boyd hangs the talisman back up and tells Sarah that they are okay. But she looks at him and she says, no, I don't think we are. And then they hear a loud horn, something that sounds almost heavenly or something that may sound like a boat. It's kind of crazy. It's this really weird type of horn, but it wasn't the one from the crash that Tabitha heard. And then they see a bright light outside the tent that seems to be coming from the sky. It seems to be above them. And then that concludes episode nine. So yeah, like I said before, that episode was mostly a filler. I mean, there are some exciting things that happen, but of course they don't get revealed. They're making us wait. And I get it. I know you guys hate that. You think they're setting up all these questions and you know, when it's time for us to get our answer, it's going to be very underwhelming. I hope that that is not the case because a lot of these questions do make me more excited. I got to I got to admit that. They make me a lot more excited. And I don't really have any crazy expectations, so I'm really hoping that the answers that we get to these questions, I I really just want the answers that we get to make sense and to just tie into the story in a way that that fits, you know? But just to go over a few things that happened in this episode, we have three different missions of finding a way out now, happening all simultaneously. First, we have Jim and Jade with the radio tower. Then we have the Matthews and whatever they just found in their whole digging quest. And then we have Boyd and Sarah in the woods and whatever this shit is that they just encountered. 
Also, we see some new questions written on the Matthews walls about them being curious about the dogs. Also, they asked how many entry points, and I'm sure they are talking about those who entered the town from multiple locations on the map at the police station rather than, you know, some random prostitute. They also asked what's with the crows, and of course a lot of you believe that the crows are the monsters during the day, but I am personally not too sure about that one, but you know, I mean, maybe, anything's possible. Then they asked, is it the same for something? And I can't really make out what that says, so if you guys know, please post it down below and you know, let's talk about it. Also, I'm ready to see these giant spiders that the series keeps hinting at, but we haven't seen them yet. So this might be the new kinds of creatures that are worse than the monsters, you know, the ones that Sarah was talking about. About. because technically all it would take for something to be worse than them is a creature that's faster and the talisman is also you know not working on them you know that's hands down some of the worst shit to worry about right there but y'all know what time it is so drop your theories down below and let's talk about it there you have it and if you enjoyed the content you know what to do thank you for watching